Okay, everybody, get excited. This is your last topic in the geometry chapter 10. So um, get excited because this is the last thing that you have to work on before you get to move on um, back to chapter 5, actually, or you'll, you'll do some test review and take a test, but here we go. Okay, so reflections. You can see, obviously, by looking at this little guy over here who has a shirt that says numero uno, that this is, he is looking at himself in the mirror, okay? So you can see this mirror. That is a reflection, okay? When we think of a reflection, we think of looking at ourselves in a mirror or in a lake or something and seeing the image of ourselves come back at us. So that's exactly what we're talking about in math, too, when we talk about reflections. In order to understand um, reflections, we need to understand what symmetry means, okay? So hopefully um, in your investigation step, you kind of figured out a little bit about symmetry. But what symmetry is, is when things look exactly the same when you fold them in half, okay? So when, um, when I talk symmetry, I'm saying that figures, let me write this down for you, figures that match exactly when they are folded in half. have symmetry. And we call that, um, the line that you fold them over, is called the line of symmetry. Okay, so I'm going to um, draw a little arrow here. I'm going to put an arrow in to point to the line of symmetry. Okay, so I'm going to put an arrow right here. Okay, that is our line of symmetry. If we fold this butterfly over the line of symmetry, it will match exactly. Okay, now if we have a regular pentagon like we have here, do you think that if you folded that over, would it have a line of symmetry? What do you think? It's hard to tell without looking at it, but we can tell that it has a line of symmetry because we can fold it. Now, we could fold this many different ways. Now, in this case, this one has many lines of symmetry, Let's draw them in. Okay, here's a line right here, straight through the middle. Okay, and then we could go from our vertices. Okay, if we line up and we go from our vertices of the pentagon, we have lines of symmetry going that way as well. So let's take each line straight across, and you can see that we have lines of symmetry going all these directions. So this object, how many lines of symmetry does it have? Let's see, I want to put my arrows on these lines too because otherwise they don't really look like lines if they don't have arrows. And we know that a line should always have an arrow at the end because it means it goes on and on. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines of symmetry in this particular figure. Or actually that's a lie, isn't it? It's um, because the lines, um, it's the same lines. We have one line here two line, three lines, four lines, five lines of symmetry. Okay, one for each vertice. Okay, that's really good. Okay, so when you're looking at figures, you're going to want to see if they have a line that you could draw that would have um, symmetry. Okay, let's go to the next page. All right, and let's write the definition of a reflection. I was going to try to type, but you know what happens every time I try to type on these things? The typing stays there no matter what I do, and I don't know why. I think there's kind of a bug in the system. So we will just not type this time. A reflection, it's a mirror, a mirror image of the original figure. That's what it is. Okay. We use a line of reflection to be able to make a reflection. So let's take a look at this example that we have down here. We have triangle XYZ, and you can see XYZ, okay, it's right here. There's X, Y, XYZ, 
okay? And then down here you have x prime, y prime, and z prime. This um, triangle has been reflected over the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to write here that this is the x-axis, okay, and this is our line of reflection. We have reflected our triangle over the x-axis. And let's look what happened to it. Here is the vertices of triangle XYZ. Okay, we have negative 2, 4. If you look here with me, okay, I'm going to try to point for you, or I'm going to try to point with the little finger. Okay, so here's negative 2, 4. Okay, let's go ahead and write that in just so you can see it. This is negative 2, 4, and y is at 5, 1, which is right here. Z is at 6, 2. Those are the original coordinates. Now let's look and see our distance from the x-axis. This one is four places from the x-axis. This one is one from the x-axis. And this one is two. Okay, and that is the distance that you see um, the y-coordinate is four units away. Okay, so let's see what happens when we reflect it. Let's go ahead and let's try to map these coordinates down here. Let's look at x prime. If we look at x prime, it looks like it's 1, let me get my pointer out again. Okay, so let's go here. 1, 2, negative 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. Looks like it's negative 2, negative 4. <clears throat> so let's write that in up here. Negative 2, negative 4. I'm going to write it down here too so you can see it. Now let's look at y prime. y prime looks like it is still at 5, but it's at negative 1 now. So let's write that in, 5, negative 1. And let's look at z prime. z prime still looks like it's at the x-coordinate of 6, but our y-coordinate is negative 2. So this is 6, negative 2. What do you notice about this reflection? If you were looking at the coordinates, what if you didn't have graph paper and you just wanted to know what the new coordinates were gonna be of the reflection? What do you notice? I'm hoping that you're looking at these coordinates and you're seeing that, look, hey, the X coordinate stays the same each time, okay? But what about the Y coordinate? It was four, now it's negative four. It was one, now it's negative one. This one was two, and now it's negative two. That's really weird, what happened? It looks to me like every single Y coordinate stays the same, okay? And every single, I'm sorry, every X coordinate stayed the same, and every Y coordinate was multiplied by negative one. All right, that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and write a rule for that because I think that's worth knowing. Okay, let me just make sure there's nothing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add another screen a rule okay so when okay, when you reflect over the x-axis the x coordinate stays the same And y coordinate is multiplied by negative 1. By negative 1. Okay, that is really important to know. Now, what do you think happens if we reflect over the x axis? Okay, let's go ahead and write that down. I'm sorry, if you reflect over the y axis, that's my mistake. Sorry about that, I don't want to confuse you. So let's go ahead and add another slide and talk about what happens when we reflect. When you reflect over the y-axis, the exact opposite happens. The x-coordinate multiplies by negative 1. and y stays the same. Very important rules. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example of a y-axis because we didn't have that before. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? So um, let me see here if I can find a good example for you. Let's add another, and let's have a quadrilateral. Let's have a quadrilateral. Let me see if I can draw a nice shape for you. Okay, let's have quadrilateral, okay? This guy is going to be K, L, M, N. And I'm going to tell you what the points are. The points are 2, 3 for K. L is 5, 1. Now these may not match on a real graph, but that's okay because I didn't draw a graph. 4, negative 2. And N is 1, negative 1. Okay, now I want to reflect this over the Y axis. Reflect over y axis. Okay, now using my rules, I know, let me write these down, K, L, M, N, okay, now I know two things when I reflect over the y axis. I know that my x coordinate is going to stay the same, and my, or I'm sorry, my y coordinate is going to stay the same. So let's go ahead and just write that in. Okay. Our y coordinate stays the same, but our x coordinate is multiplied by negative 1. So we have 2 times negative 1, which will equal a negative 2. We have 5 times negative 1, which will equal negative 5. We have 4 times negative 1, which equals negative 4. And then n was 1 times negative 1, so that equals negative 1. Those are our new coordinates when we reflect over the y-axis. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, I wanted to see if there's anything else that I wanted to write for you. Um, oh, I know, one other thing that's really important. Let's say, okay, reflected images are congruent. Okay, reflected images are congruent. They are the same shape and with proportional size. All right, I think that is about it. You have all the notes now. So I'm going to ask you to do your checkpoints or your practice and then your checkpoint. Um, if this is confusing to you, please ask questions, but you can also try to do it on graph paper yourself and practice a little bit, okay? But just remember the rules, okay? So I'm going to write this again. If we do x-axis, okay, and y-axis, when we reflect, okay, when we reflect over the y-axis, our y-coordinate stays the same. So this is times negative 1, and this is same. When we reflect over the x-axis, the x-coordinate stays the same, and the y-coordinate is times negative 1. Okay? All right. Good job today listening and taking notes. I want you guys to practice, and then you'll do your checkpoint. Excellent work. Bye for now.